Hi everyone, if you've watched my videos before, welcome back. If not and you're new, thank you for taking the time to tune into my channel. I have to say we have had a few very challenging, testing, frustrating days in the lambing shed. Things haven't gone quite to plan. Um, that is the case with livestock, unfortunately, and farming in general, I guess. Um, but yeah, a few days where it's just kind of all come at once. If if these things, if the problems, difficult lambings, etc., had been spread throughout lambing, they probably would seem a bit more manageable. But yeah, when they happen in such a close, you know, tight space of time, it can be quite difficult. But I was lucky enough to have the morning off. My sister is here on sheep duty, so I had the morning off. I had a lie in, and yeah, I think hopefully we're going to be off to a good start this week. Well, talking of good starts to the week. This ewe has had a lovely strong single. She is a gimmer, so that means she, well, this was her first lamb. We did have to help her lamb it. As you can see, it is a big, strong lamb, but now she is very settled. The lamb's quiet and a full tummy, so very pleased with that. So from this ewe, the strong single, we have then had another black and white combination from this black ewe. If you saw one of my previous videos, you'll see that this has happened for us already once this lambing season. But again, two nice lambs, only just been born, so still a little bit damp, but nice and healthy. Well, this is a lovely sight. This is a pen in the lambing shed, but it just gives them a bit more space than the single individual pens there. So as you can see, there's one new here and her twins are just snuggled up there. And then this you here, we then have her lovely triplets there as well. So how settled. We've got another lovely set of twins. As you can see, one is there trying to find the milk and the ewe is still licking off and drying off the other lamb. We have just had these salt licks delivered from our rep. So hopefully it will just quench that need if the sheep have any need for salt. They can, you know, it's ad lib access. I'm sure it might be a bit of a novelty when they first come in, but then once they've had their fill, it will just be like our mineral buckets as well, where they go just when they're feeling like it. This is where our ewes and lambs, when they're strong enough to leave their individual pen, come into this fold yard. And we now have this lamb creep feeder. So these slots, you can change that to make sure only the lamb can get their head in. Um, you open it up here and fill it up. However, there's not that many lambs in here. They're still quite young. So obviously we're not putting too much in. We don't want them to waste it. But these are the pellets that the lambs are eating. They obviously still have access to their mum's milk, which is the majority of what they're drinking. They have fresh water, they go out and have the grass, they can have a nibble on the hay and haylage if they want. So it's a really varied diet. And, and basically for us, it helps them to grow um, as quickly as possible, but eating whatever they want really. I've just come out of the house and this sheep is genuinely so naughty. She's meant to be on the other side of that fence where that other ewe is with the lambs, but she keeps getting out. I don't know if she jumps over that broken rail there. I have no idea. So I'm just going to open the gate here and hopefully be able to herd her back around. Um, hopefully she doesn't have other ideas. Obviously, I have my sidekick and little helper, main sheepdog, with me. Um, he actually sometimes is quite good, even just almost blocking a gap. And sometimes if he barks, it also helps send the sheep sometimes. But she's not really for moving. She definitely thinks the grass is greener on the other side. But she's actually left her lambs behind in the field. So not the best mother. Luckily not too difficult to get her back in although that you has thought she wants a taste as well but get them back into the field with not too much difficulty and that little lamb as well gate shut and hopefully that you stays in there now 
Obviously, I don't have favourites at all, but this black and white pair from earlier are absolutely lovely. The white one has a really cute pink nose and look at those speckles on the black lamb. They're really, really settled and couldn't ask for more. Oh, a little yawn from that one, it must be tired. I'm just with this ewe here. She is a first timer and she's just sometimes a little bit reluctant to let her lamb suck so she doesn't stand quite as well as we'd like. So what I'm doing is I'm just here, not even really holding on to her and it means that her lamb can just get some milk without her thinking that she's going to wander around the pen. So yeah, it's not even, I'm not even having to restrain her. I'm just having to be here. And the thing is the lamb's quite little. So the more it gets to the milk, the more it'll grow and it'll be a bit stronger just to, um, well, stand up to its mum um, and, and stand a bit better if she's wanting to wander off. So here she is now. Sometimes it's even a case of just a bit of presence in the pen. And so I'm not even touching the ewe. And she is standing a little bit unsure at the back, but we're getting there. Whilst we do have to assist with quite a few of our sheep who are lambing, um, often really due to the breed of ours and, and the fact that naturally they don't just pop their lambs out. I am trying to see if this one will lamb naturally. As you can see, she is doing a very, very good job. But the lamb is actually coming out in the bag. So that would not be a good thing if she didn't get up straight after. But what I did was just pull its legs out, clear its nostrils and make sure that we had a good cough for it to clear its airways. So she probably would have got that one out herself, but I just wanted to give it a last helping hand and make sure that it was out of that bag for its first breath. I just lay him over there so she can start licking him and look head up straight away, shaking off that um, birthing fluid. And she is there ready to dry him off and look after him. Just a few minutes later, this is exactly what we want to see. The first lamb is up, well, nearly up and trying to get closer to her teat. The second lamb born is still down, but won't be far off trying to get up as well. She's still doing a good job of licking the lambs off and drying them, which is really, really important to make sure that she not only bonds with the lambs, but also it gets the blood flowing and helps stimulate them to become active. I should also just mention next week, so that will be Tuesday and Wednesday, I am at the AHDB AgriLeader conference, I think it's called, forum, not sure. Um, and on the Wednesday evening after the conference, that's when we'll be doing our live stream, um, talking about the idea of leadership. Hopefully it'll be another interesting one because I think often the idea of leadership in agriculture sometimes isn't kind of comparable to other industries. So yeah, should be a good one if you can tune in. So I know we have had quite a lot of lambing videos and stuff on here recently, but what I thought might be quite interesting is just heading around a couple of the arable fields. The arable side of the farm actually kind of area wise is much bigger than the sheep side. Um, but yeah, it takes a bit of a backseat over winter as usually happens on arable farms. The first field is a field of oilseed rape. The variety is expedient and it was drilled at 2.3 kilograms per hectare. This field was drilled on the 29th of July, so got it in in good time, featuring Ralph as always. Now this bit at the bottom has always been a little bit um, lower lying and does lie wet as you can see um, when I go in close. You know, there's evidence that there's been um, water standing there it also looks like there's been a bit of pigeon damage in the bottom, so it's not looking as well as we'd like down in this bottom segment of the field. However, as we look up the hill, the plants are looking a lot, lot healthier. I think seed rate and plant population is a really interesting point when it comes to oil seed rape. We like to give the plant as much chance as possible to branch out. Um, I think this is really, really important and we notice good crops later on in the season. 
This did have PGR back, well, in the back end. Um, and now we're just starting to look at considering putting some fertilizer on. You can see Ralph there is definitely keeping a lookout. There are hares in this field, so I'm also keeping a lookout on him to make sure that he doesn't think he's going to follow them. As you can see, just walking through the main rest of the field and the plants are looking pretty good, pretty strong. Um, as I mentioned earlier, that plant population for us, we don't like to overdo it. We like to give the plants lots and lots of room. The next field I thought that I could just go and have a look at and show you is a field of winter wheat. It was drilled after oil seed rape, so hopefully it shows if it looks good. Hopefully it shows that the all seed rape is a good break crop and a good thing to go before getting your first wheats in. So this variety is X days and it was drilled at 175 kilograms a hectare. We actually used variable seed rate application with that following our mapping. But I think it's really, really interesting to see how even the crop does look which hopefully shows that the variable application rate is successful and is working. Looking in close, we're starting to get tillering, which is basically the plants branching out and they're looking pretty strong. Interestingly, both the oilseed rape and this field here were stubble raked and then strip till drilled using the Missouri. So you can still see quite a lot of, um, well, rape stems left behind in this field. We actually had to cut this rape really quite high last harvest just because of the conditions we were cutting in various reasons. But yeah, pretty happy with the evenness looking across this field. Although I obviously aren't an agronomist, so maybe some agronomists may have other comments out there. Let me know. And then looking back up the hill it's still looking good even and yeah pretty happy with this field as it stands although we always always say it's a long way until harvest well that's all for this week if you enjoyed this episode please do like and subscribe thank you